The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the opening bell. And so much for the acceleration to higher prices yesterday. The market melts to negative territory overnight. You're looking at an S&P, folks. You're right now, you're almost 20 points off the lows overnight. We had a 3,600 handle last night, 3,695. We're currently negative 80 points. That's 2.1% in the red at 37.13 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, you give it all back as well. We're actually below anywhere you were yesterday in these indices, 11,000. 345 and you make it down to a low at about five in the morning of 11,268. So almost 80 points below, you're still negative, about 2.5%. The NASDAQ 100, the Dow is red, 1.75%, almost got a 29,000 handle, barely missed it by about 22 points in the NASDAQ and the Russell, 2.2% in the red right now. Bitcoin. Holding up relatively well, considering where the markets are. Bitcoin not actually down to the lows. You see, Bitcoin now trades with extreme volatility for Fed press conferences and Fed decisions. Uh, not always how it was, but as Bitcoin cryptos have become an asset class, uh, you could call it the ultimate growth asset class with absolutely no revenues whatsoever in one capacity. But nonetheless, you're trading at 21145 for the price of Bitcoin this morning. Ethereum is at 1117 Both of those above the highs that we had. How about the cruise mar crude market finally getting a pullback? We almost got a 109 handle. You make it down to 110 That's off of 123 from where you were Tuesday. We'll take a look at crude real quick. We'll zoom in on the action in terms of this acceleration. Begins in December. Now, where's the lower trend line? Okay. Maybe we're talking about a trend that's more in line right here. If you take just this portion of the chart, that's a pretty well-defined channel line. This thing's been in since March 31st. That does not incorporate the high that it had originally when the war began. But nonetheless, you see coming down to an area that we've been to before in terms of that trend line, we'll see if crude bounces. We're about 10 bucks off the high that we saw just a couple days ago in crude. You jump over to gold, gold catching a bid this morning. Before we get into the shorter term time frame, you check out gold, quite a consolidation area going back to July of 2020. Uh, gold and interesting, right? That the lower portion of that now, it's an art, not a science, folks, but somewhere near the 382 pullback of the entire run it had from 2018 to the highs right after COVID of 2089 on a short term time frame this morning. You have the gold contract, a little bit of volatility in both directions. And we jump to notes and bonds. You talk about some movement, man. We have the 10-year, I think uh, I'll pull it up, but somewhere near 3.4% right now. But you talk about a move, man. So end of day Tuesday, 114.07. Let's zoom in on the action. We got movement yesterday just during the Fed discussion in terms of 2 p.m. to the close of the market. You had a low of 114.20. You traded up more than a full point. What's the exact high? 115.3005. You almost make it to 116. So over a full point. And if you take a look at where it is, you're talking about almost two full points to the upside. And then what does the market do overnight? It gives it all back. In the note market, you are catching a little bit of a bounce. You're kind of back to the volatility you were at yesterday. You're sitting at 115.03. Uh, but so much for lower rates and higher market couldn't even last the overnight session as we're going to open in some pretty dicey territory right now with the S&Ps down 78 points, 2.06%. We jump over to the volatility index to wrap up the market wrap up and boom, we're back above anywhere you were yesterday. I guess you did get a brief spike on that decision at two o'clock where you got the VIX above 32. We're currently sitting at 31.64. We ended yesterday at almost 28 on the VIX. Not too comfortable just going down to that level yes, just yet. 31.64 in the VIX. So to recap the news yesterday, they hiked 75 basis points. First time since 1994, I think was the number. Yes, 1994. Um, 
interesting press conference, to say the least. I was listening uh, July. Seems like the discussion is going to be 50 or 75. They're talking about that they're going to be led by the data. It was interesting when he got the question saying, you guided us to 50 and then you went to 75. Uh, why was that, to put it simply? And one of his answers I found so interesting is that you got data out talking about the CPI and the Michigan number as well during the quiet period. And that's quite an answer. Uh, and, he, and he kind of phrased it in a way that was, you know, very rarely, he's been at the Fed for a very extended period of time, very rarely will you get a data point number in the quiet period that will lead to a change in their decision in the coming meeting and in terms of where rates are, et cetera. Nonetheless, that was his reason. Um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of data we get during quiet periods as we approach the meetings coming up and how that may change things. But nonetheless, the market was pretty sure it was coming 75. That was where the probability sat, and that's where it came in. 75 or 50 is the next one. Um, and the market seemed to like that. My dad had some great comments last night on his show. Uh, restrictive rates, folks, they're, they're coming. They're in restrictive policy right now. And no matter what happens at the next meeting, okay, they are going to bring it. They're going to bring it harshly. And when you think about, there's a great question. They were talking about it earlier this morning with Michael McKee from Bloomberg on Bloomberg TV. And he had a question talking about the headline number versus the CPI number. And his question somewhat had to do with, are you going to focus on the headline number, even though that may be energy oriented, if you can't control the price of oil like you can uh, impact demand by using rates that somewhat would have more of an impact on the core numbers? And his answer was a little bit vague, but basically that number matters and that's where they might have to go and i was chatting with even uh jacob last night as well and you know he had some great points as well saying man if they're going to have to bring down the price of oil through interest rates that is going to take some serious impact on the economy folks because there are so many factors affecting that crude market that to bring down demand for the crude market to to bring that number down okay but that number's hitting a lot of people. So you get both sides of it. You understand why he's, you know, you can't say I'm going to ignore the numbers that are causing the most inflation, right? For so long, people complain that it's not accurate that you eliminate gas and food from the inflation numbers that the Fed uses, when so often those numbers have been the ones that exacerbate the daily costs of inflation on most Americans' consumers. So now we have the Fed saying, guess what? We get it. We can't just focus on the core number, okay? And these were not his exact words, but there's something you should be aware of. Because if they have to focus on the price of crude, now we've seen crude drop. And maybe that's part of the reason, okay? Uh, you see the acceleration yesterday, and we just speed through that number overnight. You're catching a slight bounce right now, but you were at 123 on Tuesday, Zooming in on the action yesterday, we came into Fed decision at about 117. Uh, you ended that day at about 116. Futures last night opened at 114. You may almost make it down to 110. We're sitting at 112.74 in the price of crude this morning. What's going to happen when that opening bell, folks? It's going to be an interesting one. We just got a 3600 handle in the S&Ps. Putting this back on a daily. Okay. Now let's just take this Fibonacci number off of there. That's a dicey market, folks. Let's put it back a little bit further for a three-year weekly. I mean, where are we stopping? We're back to the beginning of 2021, folks, just like that, sitting at 37.14. We're down 2%. We'll be back with our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. We'll be right back, folks. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now. You're negative 81 points, folks. That's negative 2.15%, trading at 37.11. You were as low as 36.95 overnight. NASDAQ 100, we're off 290. That's an even 2.5% right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, TD Ameritrade Network, with the program Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They do an outstanding job, folks, of breaking down the day's market action, and then they walk you through hypothetical trade setups, sometimes multi-leg trades in the options market on the thinkorswim platform and they're always talking about defined risk and man quite a market we have when you can just open your eyes down two percent after the run we had yesterday kevin hinks good morning good morning tommy o'brien yeah this is going to be a bumpy start to the day i don't know where the day will finish but the start is going to be a little bumpy but remember it's very important for your viewers to realize that these markets are choppy and bumpy and just because we open down doesn't mean we're going to close in this area. We might close lower, but you've got to remain focused on the market and what it's doing. Remember, at one point yesterday, the Dow was actually down right after the number and then rallied all the way back. So volatility with a VIX trading right around 32 to start the day, volatility is what's really happening here. Some forward PEs for the overall market are getting pretty cheap, Tommy. So look for, let's see if this turns into a two-way trade or just a hard down day. I'm not sure. The you know, uh, Some of the data we got was fairly weak. Housing starts and permits, horrible number. Uh, Philly Fed, negative number. Jobless claims, you know, 229,000 for the second week in a row. That's starting to creep a little higher. So there's a lot of things out there. Jerome Powell's getting the weakening economy that he wants. And remember this, Tommy, we'll get at the, you know, sec couple weeks into July, we'll get second quarter GDP. And if that comes in negative, right, which is only a few weeks away, that confirms we're in a recession, Tommy. Yeah, pretty wild, man. Uh, the move yesterday and then the move today, we got the 10-year back to 3.42%. The move across all the markets, and it was remarkable, man. I put it up on a, on a minute basis on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin. 233, it took, it took uh, 
the chairman less than 200 seconds of, of appearing for his press conference where things accelerated higher, 233. Uh, just a crazy move in the markets. But the 10-year, man, uh, pulling up the chart right now. Give me one moment as we get it because we had almost, if you look at things, Kevin, in terms of where we are, just going back to the lows of Tuesday, I have a price on the 10-year of 114.07. We almost made it to a 116 handle at the end of the day last night and overnight, and then you got all the way back. Two full points almost in both directions. Uh, what do you think about just the, the general give back of everything that happened yesterday? Is the market, you know, you have two sides of it, right, Kevin? One of the comments he said was that next meeting is going to be either maybe 50 or 75. Uh, the other right. side of it is they're going to bring it, man, and they're going to bring it hard, and they have energy prices higher, and they know that their mandate is to get prices back under control, and they're going to do it until it happens. Uh, did it take the market just the end of the trading day yesterday to figure out, hold on a second, whether it's 50 or 75 at the next meeting, it's happening, and it's happening on a continued basis? What's kind of your take on the on the market wrestling with that one? Well, I'll tell you what, Tommy. It's very important to listen to actions versus rhetoric, because here's why. Jerome Powell can't fix energy, and energy is the dominant force in inflation right now. And, Tommy, they can talk whatever they want, right, around the world. But here's the data. Here's the real data. The API number that came out Tuesday afternoon showed that the U.S. crude oil production it is 11.9 million barrels for the fourth straight week, Tommy. So it hasn't gone up in the last four straight weeks. OPEC, how about this? May OPEC production data was lower than their quota and lower than April for OPEC, OPEC plus production. How can that be in a world where crude oil prices are so higher? So wild. a lot of rhetoric out there. People talking down crude oil and you know, have got it down today. But the real numbers aren't showing up yet, Tommy. Oof, yeah, those are some great numbers, man. Thanks for bringing it. Uh, and, and and what about Kevin? His his uh, answer he had to do with talking about you know you had a lot of people saying you had you had given the guidance of fifty, right? Then you go to seventy five. You had talked about it yourself, and part of his answer at least was that, well, geez, we got this these data points during the quiet period, yep, and very unusual you know, that you would get such data during a quiet period. And I kind of found myself saying, geez, do we really got to watch the quiet period? Because we get so much data right now, right, in, in, a, in an ongoing basis. And it's all so important. It's all moving so quickly. What did you think of kind of his answers that had to do with the 75 that the market had almost priced in after, as you had said so often, man, he's usually pretty solid with the guidance he gives and sticking to it. Right. I think that was very transparent of him to say that those late breaking data points CPI and consumer sentiment that were horrible, by the way, a week ago Friday, is why he went from 50 to 75 basis points. So, listen, that's what we want our Fed chair doing, right? If that's the justification for doing it, then I can get on board with that because he's watching the data. Everyone agrees that was an ugly number in terms of headline CPI, even though the core remained pretty uh, flat or was actually down slightly. But he sees headline um CPI, which has got energy in there, and he needed to act. And I, I appreciate that he did that. He, he watched it right up to the end, the data before making a decision. Pretty, pr pretty solid. That's why I keep saying, good or bad, he's the most effective Fed chair in my career. It's going to be pretty interesting as we get to the next meeting, man. It's going to be here before we know it. We get so much data coming at us, and it is moving so quickly, as as the chairman says himself. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we got S and P's right now. We're down eighty five points. We're flirting with that thirty seven hundred price mark. What are you guys talking about on fast market coming up at twelve today? Well, when we get to this late, Tommy, in the cycle, we we you know we really can't talk about too much earnings anymore because there just aren't the numbers there at the end of earnings season. So what we really do now is go themes. So we're deciding what the theme is that we're going to do right now, Tommy. We haven't figured it out yet, but it's going to be probably theme based and things that are out there trading right now. You've got a lot of downgrades this morning. Boeing actually got upgraded overnight. So we're we're making our final decisions right now. There's a, a little bit of discussion going on. It should be coming out in the next few minutes what we're going to be talking about. Nice. And I like, I, I've seen some of these segments before, of course, every three months as we roll around, right? We get to the end of that earnings season. What I like about some of the trades that you set up during this uh, part of the year, Kevin, or part of the quarter, better said, 
is that sometimes you're setting up trades that maybe they're a month or two, right? Still using that options market because usually when you're setting up earnings for options trades, and I do a lot of these myself, learned a lot from watching you guys on Fast Market, um, maybe you're going a week or two out past the, the earnings event. Maybe you're just trading that, those Friday expirations. But uh, for the listeners out there, if you haven't checked it out, folks, the great thing about right now is maybe you're building different trades, not just hinging on that one earnings event. Maybe you're just looking for market pullback, market sentiment. I mean, we're at 3,700 down from 4,800, Kevin. My dad was talking about saying, boy, are we going, you know, to 3,200? And then part of your head goes, geez, we're, we're not that far from 3,200 right now, man. It's, it's, it's a wild market when we're 500 points away. And we just dropped 500 points, Kevin, in, in the last like week, week and a half. Uh, well, Kevin, we appreciate the time as always, the education you provide, and we'll be watching at 12 today. Have a great day, man. Have a great weekend. Uh, have a great Father's Day. Okay. Take care, man. Stay tuned, Bye. folks. We'll be coming back for the open. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you have a market opening down 2.3% on the S&P's 3706. Uh, if you polled most traders and you say, where would you open? I'm not sure you'd peg that number below any of the action that we had yesterday and markets continuing to drop right now. We might get a 3600 handle on the S&P in a moment. We're trading down 90 points, 2.4%. The wild thing, too, is that these numbers, they shifted on the way up, right, as in percentages started to become bigger numbers on the way up and now they're starting to become smaller numbers as in we're down 2.2 and a third percent right now you're off 
90 points, 48 points was 1% at the high, right? So it would take 96 points in the S&Ps at the high to be 2%. Right now you're down 88 points, 2.4%, just bigger percentages on some moves that we're still getting in this market as you open down 90 points. NASDAQ 100, we're down 314 points. That's 2.7%. 2.5 as we, we jump around on the open. Bitcoin, 21,275 crude. That's quite a pullback as well. Kevin talked about it, 123.68 to 112.09. The gold contract up about $10 this morning. And you jump over to the note and bond market. Uh, we give back some of it yet again. And we're talking about a yield of 3.44%. Just wild, man. Now, what is happening, right, is that when you had numbers that were near zero or when you had numbers talking about when you had yield I, I'll, I'll i'll speak a little bit more clearly about it when you had a yield in the tenure of about 1.5 percent that's what we kicked off the year let's put it back to a daily okay you kick off the beginning of whoops back it up these are let me find the beginning of the year here because you have the rolling this is the beginning of the year right here okay we'll back it up so the start of the year we're trading at about 131 in the tenure and we had a yield of about 1.5%. So when you got moves in that market, the yield was dramatically shifting, right? Because 1.5 versus 1.6 is quite a change. 1.5 versus 1.7, that can be quite a change when you think it's adding a quarter percentage point when you're only starting with 1.5. Okay, that's almost a 20% move. Percentages off small numbers can be deceiving, but they can be very large for that reason. Uh, we're now getting pretty mammoth moves, but you're going to see the interest rate change but you know 3.44 percent is where we're sitting at right now even with the volatility we've been getting but boy this is not a market that is showing any indications that it's going to bounce folks we back things up on a weekly where's your bounce in that market right you could say that you have an abc the a point is 129 the b point is 117 i'm ballparking that's 12 points the c point would be an area of about 121 so you're talking about 109 would be the completion of that A to B, C to D. We back things up as far as they go. And uh, 109, maybe that's the highs of where you were in 2006. The lows of that area, 103. We're at 114. Uh, kind of in no man's land here, though. Just backing it up on the 10-year, right? Yeah, you're back to where this thing was chopping around in 2008, potentially. Um but maybe you break below that level and you're pushing 103. Bond funds getting clobbered, man. That's 60-40 portfolio for retirees. Uh, poof. Some heavy, heavy losses to kick off the year. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind is that you are approaching levels that, that interest rates really begin to matter yet again. Um, you know, fixed income, when you're getting half a percent at, at the COVID lows, when you're getting 1.5% to kick off this year, that's a tough one. You're getting 3.5, you're, you're approaching 4%. That may change the conversation to people putting some money in that. And for the longest time, part of the reason you had such a run in equities, right, was that people said, what are you doing in bonds at this type of a yield? You know, you can't make money in that type of a yield. And then we have inflation just crushing any type of a return you're getting in fixed income. That market resetting a little bit. Boy, we get the markets resetting a little bit. We just got a 3,600 print in the S&Ps. Uh, yeah, all things considered, folks, okay, the run that this market has had over X amount of years, and you don't even have to cherry pick the low of 665 in March of 2009. You do not have to cherry pick that low, okay? You can go back on a number of different comparisons in terms of where this market has been. I mean, even I did the comparison, you go back a year. So what, did, uh, excuse me, a decade. So not cherry picking the low of March of 2009, Okay, but you go back an even decade. So that would be June of 2012, okay, when the market had already doubled off of the lows and almost gotten back to the highs of you where you were in 2007. The market is up 2,400 points on a 1,300-point index. You almost have a 200% return over a period of 10 years. That's with this pullback. That's not what market death looks like, folks. We have a serious re repricing going on. Um, this is a different scenario than market crashes. And, you know, you have a lot of companies that are making good money, but they got multiples that were well ahead of where they should have been. And you're getting a repricing. Uh, and maybe you come right back to where we were. 3,400 was about where we started COVID. Uh, I've heard my dad talk about the highs of the lows of March. You're talking about an area of 3,137. 
Uh, yeah, and this month alone, folks, we're only halfway through the month. You're already down about 500 points. So if you don't think the market can get there, and we're 500 points away from where that is, and we've traded those 500 points in not even that price range. We've traded, yeah, I guess so, you gotta get it, but we were trading at 4150, so that's 450 points that we've lost in a week. Yeah, that's wild, man. 450 points we've lost in about a week in the S&Ps, uh, and we're sitting at 36.98, and you're coming within a few points of those lows. We'll see how that market reacts. All right, jumping back to one of the dot plots, uh, to give you an idea of where we are going, and the Fed is getting ahead of itself, okay? I mean, excuse me, the market is getting ahead of the Fed, which it always does, all right? But we got a long way to go. Wednesday's decision took the target range for the federal funds rate to 1.5 to 1.75, right? Everyone's like, oh my goodness, 75 basis points. So, so far we, we've gotten a quarter, we got 50, now we got 75, okay? So that's 1.5 that we've gotten. The original range was zero to a quarter. So you add 1.5 to that. They're now in the range of 1.5 to 1.75. But look where we're going to be. Things are going really quickly from here. I think that's kind of where the market sobered up overnight to say, hold on a second, all right? The Fed, at least he didn't say, we're bringing 75, we're bringing 75 again. Maybe he, maybe he was going to come out and say, we're going to go 75 until I see an impact. So the market paused for a second and, and took a breather. But then it started thinking about things again overnight and said, look at this dot plot, man. Officials project 3.4% by year end and 3.8% by the end of 2023. They reiterated it's going to shrink its balance sheet by $47.5 billion a month, stepping that up to $95 billion in September. And I think the first uh, securities they may have had started rolling off potentially yesterday. June was the month, but they didn't have any rolling off, I think, potentially until June 15th exactly. I think somebody was talking about that in the den yesterday. Um, yeah, so I would keep this in mind, folks, when you think about, oh, okay, market, you know, rally relief. We're, we're, we're through the pain of it. The, the chairman's bringing it, and we'll be fine. No, the chairman's going to bring it. It's going to get brought for a period of time that is going to be well into the future at this point, folks. And we'll see how it goes. And, man, if they ever got to try and bring down the price of crude, Kevin said it as well. You cannot really control the price of crude through interest rates. That is going to be a hamper on this economy, on consumers for the foreseeable future right now. Um, and if they are ever going to try and do that, this is the type of market you're going to see with the S&P down two and two thirds percent, 101 points. It's not stopping, folks. Say goodbye to 30,000 in the Dow, 29,963. Um the Dow approaching that 382 retracement. The Dow, for some context, 400 points away from when we were pre COVID. 400 points away from pre COVID. Okay? NASDAQ 100, you still got to trade down 1,500 points to get to you where you were pre COVID. And the Dow, you got to trade down another 300 points. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll go on over, going over some other equities that are moving today. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets picking up steam to negative territory, folks. The s and is off 102 points. We're trading at 36.92 right now. We jump over to some action. So you had uh, the Swiss. They unexpectedly increased their interest rates for the first time since 2007, 2007 shifting away from a battle to tame a stronger currency to focus on inflation that threatens to get out of hand. It raised the policy by 50 basis points to negative 0.25%. That sent the franc surging more than 2% against the euro. Uh, you check out uh, the dollar, Swiss. We had risen above parity. And just like that, man, you take back almost three pennies. You talk about a move, folks, on a daily basis. My goodness. We had our man Teddy Kegstad on the program yesterday. Great interview at 40 past the hour. If you didn't check it out, folks, head on over to YouTube. Just search for TFNN. You'll find our channel. Subscribe to our channel. That's free. You'll get notifications when we go live. And then when you hit the video tab, you'll see all of the segments, all of the programs that we do, folks. You can Those are archived. You can watch those videos, the interviews we do. Uh, the interview with Teddy that I did on my program yesterday is up there. He had some great calls on uh, the U.S. dollar Swiss. He's had some outstanding calls in that crude market as crude sits at about where are we right now 111.27 as i said right where's the channel line now it's an art not a science folks but since we pulled back on march 31st since she made a low of 95 dollars on april 11th uh we've seen a series if we just move this line a little bit those are lining up pretty well we got higher highs lower lows okay and maybe that's all that's happening right here the last low we got was a low on may 19th less than a month ago of 103 and folks keep in mind these are some severe pullbacks we've gotten on this run right look at the pullbacks may 17th these are dailies we're looking at you're trading at 115 you pull back to 103 that's a 12 dollar pullback okay may 5th you're trading at 111 you pull back to what 98 that's a 13 dollar pullback april 8th you were at 109 you pulled all the way back to 95 that's a 14 dollar pullback so we got 12 dollars we got 13 we got a 14 dollar pullback there and what did we just get we just got a high of 123 to 111 we got a 12 dollar pullback 12 dollars 13 14 dollars seems to be the pullback we'll see where we go 110 110 a nice round number uh we'll see how crude reacts but nonetheless quite a pullback right now but still well within that uptrend channel i would say and Kevin Higgs, some interesting statistics, talking about output, talking about production, API numbers in the U.S., um, Saudi output. I mean, folks, uh, you know, OPEC would be illegal if it happened in the United States. You know, it's 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 uh, they work together to fix prices. So it shouldn't be surprising that when they're getting one hundred and twenty dollars a barrel, that they're, they're not going to flood the market um, to sink those prices because you only have so much crude. They only have so much. I know it seems like infinity, but at some point in the future, they will run out of those reserves of crude. That's why you're seeing some of those Middle East countries, uh, the UAE, um, 
you know, transforming their economies for a post uh, crude environment. So, yeah, they're going to be able to sell their crude. OK, why not just let it sit at 120 bucks? We'll see where it goes, man, um, from there. But none the action, nonetheless, some crazy action when you look at the Swiss, U.S. dollar Swiss as they hike and they hike to negative one quarter point. Crazy, right? That's what they hike to. But nonetheless, that's where we stand. All right. Jumping around to some of the other discussions we have going on today. Uh, what do I got pulled up here? Prime Day, Amazon, Amazon pulling back today, but Prime Day is coming July 12th and 13th. If you're looking for sales, uh, this is always a big number for Amazon. Sometimes you see it run up towards this number and then maybe sell off as occasionally the run as we get. You buy the rumor, you sell the actual news, right? They pull up from the markets again as we have the S&P off an even 100 points. Fibonacci numbers, folks, put them on your, your, your charts. What did we just get? All we got was the 382 bounce of the entire run lower. Amazon, March 29th, post split, trading at 171. You trade down to 101.26, you bounce exactly to the 382, a price point of about 127.75. Since then, you're back to testing those low, lows right now. Amazon down 3.5% after accelerating higher yesterday. One I will look at, folks, okay, is Roku. So Roku has been punished in pretty dramatic fashion recently. On a short-term basis, you had Roku up about 13% yesterday. I will say I've been talking about it, okay? And maybe this is what's given this thing a little bit of a floor right now. You have Roku trading with a market cap of $11 billion. Uh, there was an article out there recently that saw this acceleration. So I they believe it had to be out sometime around June 7th, so about 9, 10 days ago that you saw Roku spike, something to do with Netflix potentially acquiring Roku, very general article, okay? Very, very lacking of details. But it is a conversation taking place. And when you have a company like Roku trading at $10 billion, okay, and they're the gatekeeper, I've called them many times, in terms of, I think they have 60 some million customers that use their products to access streaming portals. Uh, yesterday, you're up 12, 13%. Look at the action today, you're down 2%. Okay, but the NASDAQ 100 is down 2.5%. Roku, a growth stock, had been getting crushed on some of these negative moves. You know, when you had the NASDAQ 100 down 2%, you had Roku down 6, 7, 8% sometimes like that. And today, you actually caught a bid on the open when the market sells off. So you ended Tuesday at 74, and Roku right now is trading at 80. For some context on where the market is, let's put the NASDAQ 100 up because that's a better comparison, right? NASDAQ 100 actually below or at where you were on Tuesday. You give it all back. So maybe there's something going on with Roku, folks. I do have a tiny position in Roku for full disclosure, um, but at a market cap of $10 billion, if you're willing to take some risk, because this thing can move 10, 12% in a day, okay? I was actually surprised after seeing the run higher yesterday. I said, ah, the market's getting crushed. Look at that, Roku, they roped them in with a 12% gain, then they're gonna give it all back overnight and you haven't you're only down 2.5 percent you're still trading at 81 bucks when you were dropping around at 74 towards the end of tuesday well off the 105 let's see where we are on a fibonacci basis right now in terms of the bounce you almost make it up to that 382 not exactly what you want to see there but on a longer term time frame folks you talk about getting ahead of yourself right covid lows of 51 bucks and let's back it up even further than that 80 bucks folks on roku is trading basically at prices of 2018, almost four years of give back, let alone the run this had during COVID. Um, yeah, so if you want to take a little bit of a gamble, you know, maybe over the weekend you decide to take a, a position in Roku. Maybe you take an options position over the weekend, hoping for some fundamental news possibly. Um, well within the realm of things that can happen, folks. You know, uh, the greatest time in terms of being able to capitalize off of destruction, folks, the people that have money during that time, right? Bargains are going to be a plenty for those that are in cash right now. As this market continues to cascade lower, that is an opportunity. Um, this could be an opportunity as Roku now at about ten billion dollar market cap. And folks, what is that down from? It was sitting at five hundred. And what is that? That's six times the price. So this thing was had a market cap of sixty billion dollars at one point. For context, Netflix was trading at about seventy seventy five. And Netflix one is rumored to possibly be going at them. Now, Netflix, let's see what their market cap is right now. $77 billion. And at the highs, Roku was pushing a market cap of what? $60 billion, something like that at 490. If they're trading at 10 billion right now, 816, 240, yeah, $65 billion. They almost have the market cap that Netflix has right now. So keep it in mind, but I thought I'd bring it up because Roku, you're seeing a little bit of a drop right now. 
but well off of where you were Tuesday. Still holding on to gains of about $6 on a $74 stock over those two days. So they don't give it all back. And you actually got a lift on the open. Market was not catching a lift on the open like that. So something going on there. Maybe you got some buyers in the market. Um, something I thought I'd point out. All right, folks. Do we get a bid today? Do we get a bounce? We're only 20 minutes into the trading day. s and is off 101 points. It'll be an interesting one. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You have the S&P off 108 points right now, 36.85. Watch out below, man. That is a negative action of 2.8%. Uh, Amazon, you put this thing on a longer-term time frame, going to be interesting to see where Amazon settles here. You are back to where you were in September of 2018, uh, almost exactly. You saw a high there of 102.53. You make it down in May to 101.26, and this month we have a high, a low of 101.43. Uh, seems all but natural, you break that area, 80 bucks is kind of the next ballpark that you have on this chart that it chopped around uh, when where you were. It's a tough one, folks. Amazon down 3.6% today. We got a lot of volatility to come in this market. Uh, as Kevin Hanks was saying, right, we got GDP coming up. We're gonna get payrolls before you know it. It's already June 16th, uh, coming up on Father's Day. For all those fathers out there, have a great Father's Day. Enjoy yourself. Uh, take a little time to relax and, and, and clear your head. 
because the market, folks, it's a fast one. And we'll be back tomorrow. I'm not even, uh, yeah, I'm thinking it's Friday almost because I talked to Kevin Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So wished him a happy Father's Day. But I'll be back tomorrow. And we got a full day of programming today, man. It's going to be a wild one right now with the S&Ps off 102. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index, 31.46. Putting this thing on a daily Going back, you can see we reach a high in the VIX on June 13th of 3505. We're not even right back up to that level yet, which is interesting when you think about where the market is in the S&P in terms of 3690. That's talking about lows, folks, and you don't have the VIX at highs. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're opening up. Microsoft off 2.5% right now. You jump over to Google shares off 1.4% right now. We jump to Tesla. Tesla. How about a 6% haircut? They got some news out today. Uh, the pain not ending there. You jump over to Twitter shares. Twitter up about two tenths percent as it seems like that saga is continuing at least for now. We jump over to the big dog, Apple. Off $4.24. That's more than a 3% drop. And I always remind you folks, 16.5 billion shares. So what's that? You're talking about 65, $70 billion in market cap wiped out just from yesterday's action. It's a wild one, folks. Stay vigilant. Keep your stops in place. Try and define that risk. Try and figure out what risk is acceptable to you and stick to it. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next. Larry at 11, Fast Market. Steve Rose, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Thursday, everybody.